Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be looking at this big boy here which is a Pentium 200 megahertz MMX that I was going to put online for sale but I did want to check out if it worked and the following happened when I turn on the PC. Nothing. No beeps, nothing on the display, nothing happens. Now, I have to say, I am recording this video directly on my iPhone. Uh, I'm not going to do any voiceover, so please let me know in the comments how you feel about this. This is just an off-the-cuff kind of video that I wanted to make just to see, uh, show you guys how I typically go about uh, diagnosing these types of issues. As you can see, nothing happens. We don't get any beeps. We don't get anything on the display. The only thing I notice is that the 5 volt rail dips below 5 volts and sits here at 4.9. I also notice that the hard drive isn't spinning. Now watch what happens when I disconnect the IDE cable which is attached to this hard drive. Two things will happen. The voltage goes above 5 volts, 5.13, and the hard drive starts spinning. But still, we don't get anything on the display. Now watch what happens when I connect the ID cable back again. Voltage remains above 5 volts, still nothing on the screen. But watch what happens when I turn off and turn on the machine. Voltage remains above 5 volts and the PC boots. No idea what's causing this. PC also doesn't want to start without this ID cable. Nothing happens, no beeps, nothing on the screen. So yeah, the actual issue seems to be that as you turn on the PC and you see that it bl drops below 5 volts, you know that the PC will not post. There will be no beeps, nothing on the screen. Now, let me turn it off, turn it on. Second time, as you can see here, it stays above five volts now, and the computer boots, no issue. Let me turn it off again, turn it immediately back on, stays above five volts, PC boots. Let me turn it off. Let's wait a couple of seconds. Let me turn it on again. Drops below five volts. Nothing happens, no beeps, nothing on the screen. So definitely something power related. I tried the same thing with a different power supply, different CPU, different video cards, different RAM. So probably something related to the motherboard. Now I did notice one odd thing that I actually didn't notice at first is that on this particular keyboard with this uh, computer setup, it started blinking. So no idea what that is about, but let's, meet, let's just try and restart the computer. So now the computer is in fact booting. The LEDs on the keyboard have stopped blinking and we are getting a post screen. So here we see the Pentium MMX running at 200 megahertz, booting without any issues. So what's the deal with that? Why didn't it want to start at the first try? There is a warning that the battery is low, but I don't think that's going to be the root cause. But other than that, I mean, this computer seems to be working now. Now, if you look at a computer as a complete system, it is made up of different components that can obviously fail. We have the power supply here. So if you don't have a good power supply, it can cause a lot of instability here. The fact that it doesn't want to turn on on the first try, but then on subsequent tries, it does appear to work, does indicate some instability, might be caused by the power supply, but we're not sure yet. Other than that, if we look at the components which are on the motherboard, we have uh, the CPU, 
we have the memory and we have a video card. So basically these three components here can also cause issues. Obviously if the CPU is bad then the thing won't start, same thing with the memory, same thing with the video card. If it's related to the actual motherboard itself, there are beep codes that the motherboard will emit that should help you uh, further diagnose the problem. But obviously if there are no beeps, then um, your first guess should probably be uh, either the motherboard or the power supply. Now, of course, if you want to diagnose these types of issues, you are going to be needing some additional hardware. For example, here I have another Socket 7 motherboard that I could try. I even have the uh, Edo RAM here. Obviously, you can also use these SD RAM sticks. But, you know, besides that, it's also handy to have, for example, a spare video card that you can use, also PCI an additional CPU. I have another Pentium MMX here that goes well with this board. And then also, you know, a separate power supply that should give you like sufficient uh, components to debug uh, the system. Providing, of course, that you are 100% sure that all of these components do work. And that's exactly what I did. So I did try a different power supply, same issue. I tried hooking up a different CPU on here, same issue. I swapped the video card. I tried different RAM sticks. I even tried a different hard drive just to make sure that this wasn't the issue. And I even also tried a different IDE ribbon cable just to be very thorough and be absolutely sure that none of these components were causing the issue. So the only thing that I wasn't able to swap out immediately was the motherboard. So I'm guessing that's going to be the culprit here. So let's go ahead and remove it. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this motherboard. Let me get this CPU out of the way. This is a Pentium MMX CPU, 200 megahertz. Normally it is written down here at the bottom, so you'll just have to trust me on that. It does come with the standard Intel Pentium uh, heatsink and cooler. And if we look at the actual motherboard, socket seven, uh, from a gigabyte. So here we have the model number GA586TX2 revision 1.06. A rather nice little motherboard. Socket 7 supports a, a variety of CPUs. Uh, Cyrix, AMD, Intel uh, has auto voltage detection for some of the CPUs. Um, everything is basically controlled using these dip switches that we have here. Um, for example, the voltages, as you can see here, from 2.7 all the way up to 3.5. And then we also have some other combos here in the lower range, 2.0 to 2.6 volts. The CPU speed multiplier can be configured. The PCI bus, so yeah, pretty uh, nice little motherboard. We have the ATX power connector as well, as well as the AT style power connector. Everything is included here. So we have uh, two ID connectors for the hard drives. You have floppy drive, serial, parallel. We also have a PS2 connector. The capacitors on the board seem to be in pretty good shape. Just the visual inspection doesn't indicate any bulging. I did try the hair dryer method to, to just warm up uh, the caps and see if it would then start on a quote unquote cold boot. But 
that didn't seem to change anything. So I'm a, at a bit of a loss at the moment what, as to why this motherboard doesn't want a cold start. And I can reproduce it very easily. So every time when you do a cold start, it doesn't boot. As soon as you turn off the PC, turn it on again on the second try, it immediately boots all of the time. So yeah, uh, fortunately it can be uh, reproduced. So that is definitely a good thing. But as to why it does that, uh, I'm not really sure. Now, as I was debugging this computer and trying to find out exactly what component was causing this, you know, we looked at the different caps. But then all of a sudden I thought, you know, why don't I replace this coin cell battery here? So that's quite an easy fix. It was giving us this warning at startup. So, you know, this is a standard coin cell, three volts, CR2032 battery. Picked up a brand new one, put it in here. And you know what happened when I turned on the computer? Let me plug in a video card first. Cold start. And that's the beep of the computer posting. So for some reason, this computer will only boot if it has a fully charged three volt uh, coin cell battery in it. Really, really strange. I can absolutely reproduce it. If I put the original coin cell in it, it will never post on cold start. It will post on a subsequent uh, restart. But with this new coin cell battery, the system always starts. So apparently this little guy here was the culprit. And so, yeah, as you can see, all it basically took was this little coin cell battery in order to fix this computer. So let's turn it on. Now, if my theory is correct, a cold boot, as you can see, the PC is posting. We get the Energy Star logo. We get the memory count. And normally the computer should boot just fine. So yeah, I would definitely call this a success. So yeah, as a reminder to everybody, never forget the power of the coin cell. If you ever have a computer which is acting up, it's a very simple procedure to replace the coin cell and you never know what you might get out of it. In this case, we've got a working Windows 98 system here, Pentium 200 MMX ready to go. And hopefully it'll now find a new owner that can turn this into a really cool retro machine. If you like this video, please consider liking it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.